Also, the arrest tonight and the targeted killing of four Muslim men in Albuquerque, what we're just learning about the primary suspect and a possible motive and how the community helped track him down. Nuclear threat, Russian forces blocking inspectors from a nuclear power plant in Ukraine rocked by a series of explosions. The plant, Europe's largest, is twice the size of the infamous Chernobyl. Morgan Chesky is there with more on how catastrophic this can be. Plus, the superhero on the other side of justice, the Flash star Ezra Miller charged with stealing alcohol from a Vermont home. It's the latest in a bizarre and disturbing string of accusations against the actor. So could studios start pulling the plug on Miller's upcoming movies? Warning signs. The nurse charged with six counts of murder for a fiery crash in California. The shocking new details prosecutors revealed about her dangerous driving history. And a legend's farewell. Superstar Serena Williams set to retire from tennis when she plans to hang up her racket and what she wants to do next top story starts right now Good evening, I'm Gotti Schwartz, in for Tom Yamas. We begin tonight with the latest on that FBI search at the home of former President Trump. Here's what we know so far. Sources telling NBC News the hours-long search at Mar-a-Lago was for classified documents Trump allegedly took from the White House when he left office. The former president was in New York City at the time of the search, but he blasted it as a politically motivated raid as it happened. Moments ago, Trump's spokesperson releasing a scathing new statement, calling it a, quote, brazen raid that would, quote, make a third world dictator blush. Trump supporters also protesting outside Mar-a-Lago today and some taking their outrage to the Internet, including a January 6th rioter who called for a, quote, civil war. We're going to have more on that in just a few minutes, including reaction from Republican lawmakers. But we begin with senior White House correspondent Kelly O'Donnell in Bedminster, New Jersey, where the former president is tonight. Now, when you got close to it. Today's spectacle outside Mar-a-Lago. We're here supporting our president. After the unprecedented inside, the home of a former president searched. FBI agents spent the majority of the day Monday executing a warrant approved by a federal judge. The FBI's access to the Trump residence and private office was coordinated with the Secret Service, according to an official who says the former president's protective detail validated the warrant and was present during the search. At least one Trump attorney was there, too. Today, that warrant is sealed, so details about what was taken from the Trump family quarters inside the private club remain secret for now. What we don't have right now is the affidavit to the search warrant. We don't know what they asked for, and we don't know why they asked for it. Multiple sources say the investigation is connected to classified documents. Son Eric Trump. The purpose of the raid, from what they said, was because the National Archives wanted to, you know, cooperate uh, whether or not Donald Trump had any documents in his possession. The former president announced the search himself in a lengthy statement, attempting to set his own narrative. The weaponization of the justice system, he wrote, then made a reference to what happened, speaking by phone for a campaign event last night. Another day in paradise. This was a strange day. And this morning, he posted a campaign-style video. But soon we will have greatness again. And is now using the FBI search as a fundraising tool. We pursue justice without fear or favor. We intend to hold everyone, anyone, who was criminally responsible for the events surrounding January 6th, for any attempt to interfere with the lawful transfer of power from one administration to another, accountable. That's what we do. Today at the White House, President Biden declined to react to the search of his predecessor's home. And the press secretary deferred a flurry of questions to the Department of Justice. We're just not going to comment on, on any ongoing investigations from here. We're just not going to comment on the Department of Justice investigation. Okay. And Kelly O'Donnell joins us now. Kelly, you're in Bedminster near the president's property. What more do we know about how the president's responding to the search? Well, Gotti, we have learned from a Trump attorney who has confirmed to NBC News that FBI agents seized about a dozen boxes, removed about a dozen boxes from a basement storage area at Mar-a-Lago. And the paperwork that came along with that search tells them that they were investigating the potential mishandling of classified information and the Presidential Records Act. And 
the former president is here in Bedminster, and tonight is hosting a group of House conservatives from the Republican Study Committee. They're among the most loyal Trump supporters who are currently members of Congress. Gotti? Kelly, thank you. And now to the political fallout over the FBI's unprecedented search at Mar-a-Lago and what it might mean for former President Trump as he weighs another run for the White House. This is the midterm elections are now less than three months away. NBC's Von Hilliard has more. The FBI search warrant is more than part of an investigation into a former president, but also a possible future one. Now we may have to do it again. We may have to do it again. Trump this weekend flirting again with the 2024 bid. And today, according to allies, only more inclined. I talked to the president just about an hour ago. The one thing I can tell you is that I believed he was going to run before. I'm as stronger in my belief now. But the next election up is the midterms. And the Republican strategy is clear. Stick by Trump, question the Department of Justice. It's like what we thought about the Gestapo and pe people like that, that they just go after people. If Republicans win back the House in November, the next likely speaker, Kevin McCarthy, tweeted his plan for the DOJ. Quote, we will conduct immediate oversight of this department. Attorney General Garland, preserve your documents and clear your calendar. Even potential 2024 presidential rivals to Trump flocking to his defense. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis calling the FBI search the weaponization of federal agencies. Former Vice President Mike Pence demanding the Attorney General give a full accounting to the American people as to why this action was taken. A stark contrast to Republican reaction, including Donald Trump's to the FBI's investigation into Hillary Clinton during the 2016 presidential campaign. The FBI examined her use of a private email server and the extent to which classified material may have been unsecure on it. The FBI search of Trump's Mar-a-Lago property came just three months before this year's midterms. Primary season underway now, with a vote in Wisconsin tonight. Democrats today tried to stay focused on the passage of legislation. To create good jobs, empower workers, grow the economy. Political wins ahead of November's midterms, trying not to be overshadowed by Trump's legal battles. And Vaughn joins us now from Palm Beach, Florida, just outside Mar-a-Lago. Vaughn, is there any indication that any Republican leader might break with the former president after what we saw yesterday? You know, Mitch McConnell, the Senate uh, minority leader, has had a tough relationship with Donald Trump ever since January 6th. And when he was asked about it in Kentucky today, he sidestepped and did not address it. But when you're looking uh, by and large, Gotti, I had a conversation uh, just a few moments ago with a source close to Trump who spoke with the former president this afternoon. And they are uh, elated, very happy with the response within the Republican Party, noting that even the likes of Mike Pence and Ron DeSantis have come out and issued statements in defense of them, saying that they have have not seen this sort of unity around Donald Trump. Uh, that includes even the two impeachment trials that he went through and even these January 6th select committee hearings that have played out. Uh, the response that they have received in the last 24 hours, they're very pleased with ahead of a potential 2024 presidential bid for himself. Vaughn, thank you. And after the news broke last night, online users of pro-Trump internet forums flooded the comment sections, writing about a, quote, civil war with a warning to, quote, lock and load, while mainstream pro-Trump influencers with millions of followers online doubled down on the dangerous rhetoric that we were hearing. Let's bring in NBC News senior reporter uh, Ben Collins. He's been monitoring online reaction to the FBI's search in Mar-a-Lago. He's got an exclusive a new uh, article up on NBCNews.com. Ben, you've been covering the furthest right fringe for years. I vividly remember that you were the first person that I heard warning that something like January 6th could happen, not in the days before January 6th, uh, but in the weeks prior to that, based on what you were seeing online. Based on what you're seeing today, how do you see some of this playing out? Yeah, it's the same kind of fervor, and it's also the same kind of reckless disregard for if the feds are watching your spaces anymore. That went away after January 6th. People were afraid, they didn't want to get collared, all this stuff. But I think there, there's this feeling that if you were going to get taken down for January 6th, that already happened, and this is such a, a grievous overstep in their eyes uh, by the federal government, that it's, it's worth starting the fight over. And you hear this from you know, people with six million YouTube subscribers saying that the war is starting now, the civil war is coming. It's not just on the fringes in these spaces, not just in the extremist forums that organized January 6th. It's in these much bigger 
places where, you know, the Steve Bannon right is now openly saying it's time for a civil war. And, and you also see on some of these forums that it's not just uh, about former President Trump. They're saying if former President Trump's home is being searched, they're coming after you next, right? Yeah, that's the plan. They're trying to say that everything that Donald Trump has gone through, it's actually an attack on you in the long run. In 2022, what you'll see running up to the midterms is the idea of a persecution complex, that Donald Trump had the election stolen from him. That's what you saw at CPAC. The top concern at CPAC among conservatives there was that the election was stolen. And then on top of that, that you know your way of life is being taken away from woke culture, CRT, and all this kind of thing. And that this was the cherry on top. This was the, the thing. You have to fight back against the federal government now. A lot of these extremist movements have come around, things like the Boogaloo movement, the Proud Boys, they've been getting people into this state of mind for the past few years. And they've been waiting for sort of an inflection point. This to them right now is that inflection point. And when you take a look at, at what's going on on some of these forums, is it different than what we saw before January 6th? I remember a lot of this stuff happened in the open. It happened on Twitter, it happened on Facebook, it happened where everybody across the political spectrum could read it. Now it seems like it's much deeper and behind sometimes paywalls, eh, other times apps that, that most people don't use. Yeah, a lot of these groups just use Telegram. So they use communities to sort of, you know, they go one or two rows deep in so that the real Proud Boys chat is, you know, a community within a community, right? Those places have, were lit up all night last night. I was in a Grapefruit chat where they talked about that, which is at a white nationalist group. However, you know, in, in the out and about spaces, places like the Donald, which really did organize January 6th, they are just back to straight up violence again. The top post last, uh, there last night just said lock and load. So that's where we're at. We're, they are talking about assassinating people and they're talking about the civil war and in the article that you just released uh, some of these people are january 6th, 6th rioters that are awaiting sentencing right right that's the worry here you know it's really easy to write these people off they're anonymous people on the internet the proud boys talk a big game don't really do stuff that frequently in public however some of those anonymous people are very much for real one of the the top comment under that lock and load post a guy mentioning the civil war that was a guy who's a 40-year-old man from Washington State who's a, awaiting uh, sentencing for what he did on January 6th in storming the Capitol. Um, so there are people who are bluffing. There are people who are trying to get people ramped up. But there are also people who are very serious about this. We now know, we now know from January 6th that there are enough people who will go and have their emotions take over and storm a Capitol or something like that. When they're told not to storm a Capitol but to you know start the revolution, start the Civil War, that's when it gets really dangerous. And Ben, I hate to ask, but what do you think the chances are that we may see civil unrest because of this? Civil unrest, absolutely. I think that, you know, we've already seen this in the run-up to the 2018 midterms. There was the MAGA bomber who was sending pipe bombs around. He was obsessed with Fox News talking points. There was also um, that one specific guy who uh, uh, shot up a synagogue, killed eight people in Pittsburgh because he was obsessed with the caravan. So. That's, there is already a precedent for this, but even back then, the, the, I, I would say the idea that this is the apocalyptic idea, that your way of life is getting taken away, it wasn't at that fever pitch it is now. Ben, thank you so very much for joining us here. And we're going to turn now to breaking news out of New Mexico, where police have arrested a man in connection to a string of killings of Muslim men. Let's get right to Guad Venegas, who is in Albuquerque with the latest on the case. Tonight, police say they've arrested 51-year-old Muhammad Siad, identified as the primary suspect in the recent killings of four Muslim men in Albuquerque. A tip from the community is what helped us lead us to this subject and what helped us eventually find the car that we put out just two days ago. Authorities said an interpersonal conflict may have led to the shootings. Syed is being charged with two homicides, the killings of Abtab Hussein and Muhammad of Sal Hussein. We knew Albuquerque would step up and somebody would find and identify that vehicle for us, which is exactly what happened. The four killings taking place on different evenings in this section of the city, three of them in the last two weeks. On Sunday, authorities released a photo of the suspect's car, pleading for the public's help and adding a $20,000 reward for information. Today's news, little comfort for Sharif. Hadi, the brother of victim Mohammed Sayyir Ahmadi. Everybody's coming to me and they crying for him. If you lost somebody, you better get it back. The latest victim, 25-year-old Naeem Hussein, who was found dead Friday night, just hours after attending the funerals of two of the other murder victims, Muhammad.